Hey guys, welcome to Pitching 101 again. I'm your host, Trevor May. Um, thank you for being here. Don't forget, sub to the channel below. Leave a comment after the video. Today we have a very, very interesting topic to talk about. Um, a lot of you guys asked for like pitcher and catcher relationship um, information, like what I look for in catcher or, or what do I think makes a good catcher, um, things of that nature. I think that's going to be put on hold and for another video, definitely something I want to address, especially because a lot of people that check these videos out aren't, aren't necessarily pitchers, they're position players or they're uh, um, catchers, and they're trying to figure out the uh, uh, best way to fill those roles, right, for their team, So, which is great, and that's awesome, but we'll get to it next, next video. This video... I was able to fi find a really, really awesome segment on MLB Tonight. Now, I, I, I apologize for the quality of the video for the, for the, uh, for the beginning, but this is, this is how videos are, uh, are um, kind of put on Twitter, like when they're full screen, this is kind of what they look like. But it doesn't necessarily matter about the video, more so the audio. So this is John Smoltz. He's uh, 21 years in the major leagues. Um, uh, one of the best pitchers of all time, top to bottom. Um, incredible starter and then became an incredible closer. So uh, he did both, um, you know, at a Hall of Fame level, which is, you know, uh, pretty much unheard of. He's pretty much the only person to ever do it. Um, and he's talking about working out, right? And I just, before we get into it, I want to, I just want to clear up that I agree with about 90% of the things he says. Um, and this isn't about being right or wrong or agreeing or not agreeing or having the conversation. I want to, I want to kind of translate um, what he's saying into a real life situation. Cause I'm literally making decisions the way that he is talking about decisions being made right now. Um, the last two years I had, I've thrown 24 I've had 24 appearances in the last two years. Yes, it was Tommy John surgery. That's a long, long time, but that's a long time to be away from the game. Okay, you want to avoid injuries. It's more important than ever to be on the field. So things he's addressing are things that I'm living through and decisions I'm making in in real time. And I want to I want to talk a lot about why I make the decisions I'm making and how the process I'm going through as it pertains to what he is saying. So I thought it'd be a really cool. Um, a really cool exercise um, in, in kind of helping you maybe decide how you're going to make decisions um, and and how you might move forward. So this might work really well for, uh, I think this would be a great opportunity for guys who are like in the minors at the moment or even the low minors or just trying to get drafted or in college. That age group is going to really, really, because there's just a lot of information being thrown at you. Of, of how to get seen or get you know this that and the other like that is the that is the nature of our game now um it is like is like making noise with with velocity or with strength or with power or with you know all this stuff um in order to to kind of get that short term return but long term it might not um, be the best thing for you but you learn that through experience and I'm learning that through experience as well so I'm gonna play the video. I'm going to go full screen here. You're going to see me in the bottom uh, left corner of the screen. We'll watch it, and then what I'll do is I'll stop. When I see parts I want to talk about, I'll stop. I'll break it down. We'll continue the video and go from there, all right? So without further ado, we'll just start this up really quick. Okay, so this is John Carlos Pena uh, in the middle there, a, a first baseman, you know, played for the Rays a long time, and they're having a conversation about workouts, okay? Uh, excuse the bits dropping there in the middle of the screen. I don't know why that's going. All right. Here we go. Start it up. You worked out this time of year as a, so here, a pitcher? Here's what I did. Every year around this time of year, I think, oh, man, do I have my fastball from last year? Because we were always going to the playoffs, short time of recovery, doing high reps, low weight, trying to get my arm ready to throw on the mound because when we get to spring training, that's what you want to do. I did more throwing and less of the violent weight lifting that goes on today. The newer player is bigger, stronger, faster. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And when I see what they're doing, I thank, I thank God every day that I played when I did because I, my body could not take what, what the load that they're putting on their body at the amount of weight and the, the, the machinery and the tires they're lifting. So first of all, there is a very important um, element here to realize, guys. And he's completely right. What he basically just said there is the only thing that matters when you're a pitcher 
is what you do on the mound. How you get yourself to a situation where you can do that job the best as, to your ability on that mound is yours to figure out. But just because a bunch of other guys are doing something, or like you, you, you know, we live in the social media age. You see all these guys going hashtag no off season. They're and they're 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 like vert jumping forty inches, and you're like I. Like for me specifically, why do I need to jump 40 inches? I don't. It's it's literally a look how athletic I am move, right? And there's a lot of workouts. You know, I'm not saying that that's not, people shouldn't be jumping boxes. I'm just saying I I don't see a need for me to be jumping boxes. See that distinction I'd be making? There's nothing wrong either way. Um, And so, in, in, in you know, especially when you're, I, you know, I went through the minor leagues. I went, I was drafted out of high school. You're always trying to separate yourself. Right. And you're trying to add, you know, you're trying to add a projectability to your to your resume. Look how athletic I am. Look, this could translate into something in the future. Right. That is kind of the the way that you get drafted and the way you get seen. OK, but as you move forward, you need to get you, yourself to a place comfort level wise where, where you know yourself so well. That now it doesn't matter if that guy's throwing a super hyper long toss or if that guy is out there running way, 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 way more poles than you or that. And this is something I, this is something I've had to really work on through my career. And you get a certain comfort level the longer you've been around. Yes, you earn a little respect and you get a little wiggle room. Uh, um, but you got to have those conversations and you got to, you have to actively learn all of the time when it comes to um, how you prepare yourself and how you, uh, Get ready to go do your job on the mound. Extra isn't always better. Extra as opposed to, you know, we talk about purpose constantly here on, on, these, on these videos. He's going to talk about his purpose. He just said it. My purpose of throwing was I was on short rest. I, didn't have, I wasn't going to make any real. Resting was more important for me, and then getting my arm in shape was more important to me, and getting in, a, in an, amazing, an amazing physical shape, in beat shape, in, in power shape, wasn't, wasn't as important as long as my stuff was still bouncing back, as long as I had stuff long in my career. And that rest... And this is the translates into, you know, higher rep, low weight, he said, right? Uh, uh, just more recovery. So important because baseball seasons are, are insanely long. So let's, let's get even farther into it. Lifting up and the ropes and all the things. So they're stronger and they're doing things for this style of baseball that makes it acceptable for them. You don't think to, you could have been the pitcher that you were, a Hall of Fame pitcher working out like this? I, I'm telling you right now, I, if I trained to throw 98, 99, I could do it. And I would have probably a six to seven year career. But yeah. because I was able to do what I did and, and pitch and, and cruise at 93, 94 with the occasional 97, 98, I ended up having 21 year career. And so that's the difference. And they're training to throw through a brick wall, but that's the reward system they have. So I don't blame the player. But then sooner or later, you got to realize as a player, can I sustain this kind of career past six years? And right now, the evidence is not showing that a lot of players from this, from the last six years on, are going to have 10 plus year careers. And that to me is a shame because when I played and when you played, you wanted to play as you want a jersey ripped mm -hmm. off your back, yeah. right? And I think as a broadcaster now and as a guy who works at MLB Network, I want to see these guys play 15 years. I don't want to see them play. Okay, so now let me address this really quick. Just because you work out a lot or you do a lot doesn't necessarily mean that it's not going to translate into a long career. For example, I know a guy who, uh, Matt Belisle, does does more work in the weight room than anybody else, pretty much anyone on the team. But he was 37 years old, still throwing low 90s, um, and that. But that he knew that worked for him. That guy had his pro program down, and his body. He was he was ready to go here. Like everything, his whole his whole physi phys, physiological side of things, he was he was always ready to go, and he stayed healthy. And he was he was a uh, that 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 is the 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 underlying. You have to have those before you can go compete. So he was really good at that. Um, I I just I I need to make it very very clear that uh, it's about learning you, and it's about aligning what you're learning with what your goals are. Okay. And, and, um, I don't, I, I'm not sure what the evidence of guys not like in the last, you know, the transition we've had in probably since 2010 into like high analytics, um, 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 like driveline type, like high workload velo 
building programs, you know, and young people. I don't think we, I don't think we've built it out enough. Um, I don't know how many more Tommy Johns are happening. There, pro there is data there. I, I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know if there is necessarily a ton of data saying guys are only going to have eight year careers now. I think that's more of a gut feeling. Um, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but, but again, the fact of the matter is the season is very long, especially if you, if you're young and you play 80 games a year, that's a lot, right? Game, this, anything that's more than seven or eight months out of your year of a, of an, of an athletic, uh, uh, event or, or, or workload is going to break you down so much that it, rest is important in my opinion. So that's the way I approach it. Right. And so, um, I don't, th I, what I'm taking is there's no absolutes here, but, but at the end of the day, the most important thing you can do is learn as much as you can about every little, uh, every little thing that you do well or weaknesses you have or pain points, right? Or, or I don't want to call them pain points, but, but weaknesses that, that develop in your own, your own body um, throughout the season so that you can constantly monitor and make sure that everything's staying uh, where it needs to be. Play six, seven, eight. I really want to see these great players develop. And that's my one, my one concern with the amount of weight that I saw at the end of my career with young players. And now those players have no longer been in the game quite as long. And that uh, it's the time will tell, I, I guess, which theory works. Is that how you see it? They're working out for the sprint of a career and not the marathon like John did. I, I really agree with everything he just said. I mean, if I'm, if I'm a young pitcher, by the way, I, I'm taking notes right here. Everything that John Small says, right? To see how did he get ready? Because in reality, if you just buy into the fact that everyone is working these CrossFit type workouts and they go all out high intensity, you know, how about your craft? How about working on, on pitch uh, um, sequencing and mm -hmm. trying to hit your spots and your accuracy and your control? You know, I think sometimes that takes a back seat. Yeah, you throw 100, but then you come into the season and you don't sequence your pitches right. You can't hit your spots, and now you're getting shelled anyway. A couple things that are different today, and I get it. Again, I, I, the player is the system they have. We did a lot, a lot of running, and we did a lot of throwing off the mound. And unfortunately, there's less running and less throwing off the mound, a lot of flat ground work. Well, as I always said, and it was always taught to me, if you want to get in your, uh, if you want to get good, get in your office. And the office was on the mound at, at mm -hmm. tilt and 60 feet, right. six inches. If you want to train for arm strength, throw a long toss. But the two don't work together. For me, flat ground is such a different monster. So this is really interesting, and I agree. Um, I agree top to bottom. One, long toss for building arm strength. I love long toss i love it always have honestly i think that a lot of what uh why i hurt myself why i got tommy john yes yeah you know it, sometimes it's just inevitable but i think that the timing of it my long toss had been lacking for a few weeks at that point had been lacking uh, quite a bit um and my forearm strength wasn't there that um combined with that off season i was doing a lot of work for my back and throwing Getting way out there and throwing didn't feel as good yet, right? I was just really getting over it at the end of the off season, so so my workload of throwing like long long toss it just wasn't caught up to where I needed it to be, where it had been my whole career, and I think that played in. Now this off season, I'm out to 200 feet plus four times a week because I love I love I love just like track I love. Uh, developing my release points because that's really important in the offseason too. Finding the release point, like where if I want the ball to go there, where do I need to release it? What's that feel like? That's kind of the process. So long toss is really important for me. Throwing off the mound is very important, even if it's 10 pitches. The problem with that is, and the reason I don't try not to do it as much is because I naturally tend to throw too much because I need to like get results immediately. And I know that's how I am. And so throwing a flat ground where I – throwing a flat ground with a – I don't necessarily need a guy to be down. I could be – Um. I use my flat grounds differently. And that's – here's what I want to tell you. If my – sometimes I get a catcher down because I think a catcher down is better because I can move targets a little bit. But what I do and, and what – feeling the tilt is very important. That gives you a better simulation of the game. But I use a uh, flat ground more of a mental – a me for first of all, less resources are needed. You can do it right away. You don't have to go to the mound. Uh, no pitching coach needs to be there with you or 
wants to be there with you. Usually pitching coaches like to be around when you're throwing off the mound. So like you don't need to grab a guy. So it's just, it's a little bit like, okay, I want to get five or 10, just snap, snapping off some curveballs or whatever it is. So you can throw to your throwing partner or you can grab one of the bullpen catchers who are already there and, and get them to sit down. What I do is I practice more on the side of, I use it more of a, I'm going to move a target around mentally. I'm going to pick a target and I'm going to allow my brain to tell my body how to adjust based on being on the fly ground. That's called, it's practicing adjustments and it's really, really, really helpful for me. Um, and that's why I don't try to throw flat ground every day because then you get used to it. So I, in between, I throw flat ground more. Now, if I, when I'm on the mound, I do the same thing. So it, it, I just keep it as close as close as possible. But of course, throwing off off the slope will be the, the closest to end game as you can get. And I completely understand where he's coming from there. I think that running, running was the substitution for working out. Not substitution, but it it, it like it gave you that physical um, um, fire up that workouts would do. It gave you that maintenance of your of your strength. That maintenance would it keeps your legs strong. Running does. You have strong legs when you run a lot, right? And and you know they're always talking about flushing and whatever. Running does uh, uh, um, flush your body. It does. Getting a sweat does flush your body. So I think that those things have kind of like. I don't want to. I don't want to say they've supplanted. Like working out heavy has supplanted running, but it's become more of a we can we can peak performance you with 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 in the short term with working out as opposed to running is more of a, a of a really light light work type situation, and that's what he's saying. So, I'm another person who likes to run, but I don't think I need to run insane amounts. I don't think you need to run insane amounts for from a cardiovascular standpoint because we play games every day. So again, top to bottom, here we go. Here's my here's here's my list of important things, right? One, performing out on the mound, everything else below it. So if I go out and I'm like in order to pitch tonight and have the energy I need, I'm not running today. And it's Thursday. I usually run on Thursday. I would rather not just run because it's Thursday and have a little bit more energy for that night. But if I'm like, man, my legs are a little like gunky. I don't feel like, like I have a lot of in my legs. I'm going to run to fire them up a little bit. They need to be woken up. Say it's a day game and we don't usually run on Sundays. I'm like, well, in order to be ready for the game today, I should probably get out, get some sprints in or at least some, some mid distance work. But I've learned that about myself. As I'm going into the year, year 12 of, of professional baseball and fifth in the major leagues. I, I can, I can. Be okay with making those decisions. And a lot of times people do things because that's just what they do. So you need to get yourself to a place where you have a very clear reason why you do things. And he has very clear reasons why he feels the way he does and did the things he did. So if you see it from that lens, which is awesome, I'm, again, like like Carlos said, taking notes. And those are things I like doing. I'm definitely more in the camp. Because your release points not oh. the same. You don't emulate the same thing. I'm definitely in the uh, in the in the John Smoltz camp because I have I had a back issue with overcompensation. My back issue was caused by hips not being used correctly, and that's just the way I'm put together. I've come to that conclusion. The way my body is grown, my hips aren't used correctly for long periods of time unless I unless I have tailored work to keep them firing and working correctly. I started doing this last year. My back felt great. That and combined with a super strong core from Pilates. Strong core, hips firing correctly and loosening up. Bada bing, bada boom. My back. My back, it's, you know, it gets stiff sometimes. You know, that's just kind of what happens. But um, keeping myself in a place where I feel good on a regular basis, that, that's the that's the where I've gotten. But the work on on hip firing and on on core strength and all that kind of became my workout. And so you don't see me on there deadlifting. You don't see me in there like heavy benching. Like, what do I need? A, what do I need a big chest for? I don't, I don't, I don't also swing a bat benching stronger for guys to swing a bat. I don't swing one. Right. I need upper body functional upper body strength within a, within a range of motion. That's more important to me because I'm a pitcher. So as you move forward in your careers, right. And that actually com completes the video, so I'll go back to full screen. As we move forward in your career, I would, I, I would, 
I would love for you to take every single day and try to take pieces of what you see and, and, and having an explanation why whatever that is that you're doing helps you. And it could be, this is going to help me today because of this. Like I said with the running, this is going to help me today because I don't feel like I have much, much legs. Running to run is going to help me. But knowing the difference between my legs are tired or my legs are stiff. One needs running. Stiff needs running. Tired means no running. And then you communicate that. If you're a minor league guy, you communicate it to your strength guy. Communicate it. Every organization has diff- just say, hey, I did these things in college and it made me feel good because I think this. What do you think? And have the conversation. If they st- if they still hard headed, well, at least you said something, right? A lot of guys are like, man, I, I should I should I like not work out at the field because I have my workouts, but they they don't want me to do them. They want me to do their workouts. Have the conversation and and work through everything they want you to do, and 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 think of and then go through why it's either going to help you or why you don't think it's going to help you, and have the conversation. They and that's the best way to that'll make you so much better in the long term. And that's what he's talking about, long term. So I, my goal, everyone's like, oh, uh, you know, you, how many saves or how many holds or, or, or how, you know, how many innings? Like I want to be available all year. I want to have a healthy, full 2019. That is it. Everything else we talked about, um, um, having purpose behind your pitches, developing a game plan, understanding how your ball, uh, how your pitches work, and and how you can get people out, uh, um, developing game plans based on the hitter, and then how your stuff works. You know, going through that whole process. None of that matters unless you're on the field. So I have a goal, and it is to be on the field because I know all that other stuff will take care of itself, and that is it. So thank you guys all for being here. This is going to be a really cool comment section, I'm sure. Don't forget to leave your comment. If you heard something, you're like, well, you want me to extrapolate on or you want me to go a little bit more in depth. I try my best to be, uh, 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 to, to continue the conversations with you down there below. I really appreciate that. This was a super fun video for me to do. Super interesting. I hope MLB doesn't make me take MLB uh, uh, TV doesn't make me take this down because I use their video. Hopefully this helps further the game of baseball, but uh, you know, uh, uh, I just thought it was, I, I, I love the segment. I, 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 uh, he had, he was crushing it with everything he was saying. Um, and, and I think that there's, there's a lot of wisdom to be taken from there. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of perspective on how I take those things and like apply it to what I'm trying to accomplish now. So don't forget to sub to the channel below as well. Hit the little bell so that you get uh, notifications every time I have a brand new video. We have all kinds of videos, guys. There's a bunch of video, baseball videos from the past that are covering a lot of the topics we talked about today. And uh, I will see you next time here on YouTube.television, YouTube.com slash I am Trevor May. Have a great one, guys.